at age 12, I had a passion for mobile applications. Little did I know that this would lead me to embark on a serendipitous journey, working with companies that I never thought would be possible. The problem was everyone that had built a successful app, most of the time were either much more experienced or much older than me. Now, I could look at that as an obstacle, but I didn't let that stop me. I remember programming at night for hours and hours, teaching myself new programming languages that I thought would be useful for the future. Eventually, the persistence paid off, and before I knew it, I had built four apps that had been on the Google Play Store. It had got thousands of downloads from 14 different countries, and I started getting countless emails from users internationally. My email box was flooded. I always go back to what Gary Vaynerchuk said, and he said that if your product or service is good enough, the market doesn't care about what your surname is, the market doesn't care about how you look. If your end product is good enough, the market will adapt and you will win. I then encountered a problem. At the time, I was 15 or 16, and it was around the stage where I needed to get paid, uh, I needed to get paid for something. And I realized that companies, house, and banks had their own policies for opening a business bank account. So I was under 18, and I couldn't open a business bank account, even though I really needed to, urgently. And telling a company to send funds into a personal account seems really unprofessional. So I was completely bewildered. And I started asking myself different questions about how I can make this work and how I can make sense of this. And it was difficult, but I found the answer in the end. And it was only recently where I found a solution to this problem. And I had to, I was forced to find a solution to this problem because I needed a business bank account urgently. I had to resign as a director of my own company and appoint my dad as a, as a director in order to open the business bank account. So I got there in the end. Two, um, around two months later, uh, th there was a company I was working with at the time that decided to send products as a form of payment because they couldn't pay me because I was under 18. And two days later at the house, there were two massive boxes full of products from different companies. And I was really thankful for that. At this point, I started to question the conventional educational model, and that had led me to think about what's most important to me. I knew one thing for sure, and that was I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be a business person. And convention says that if you want to build a successful business, you have to attend university lectures, sit in a room, and if you want to succeed, you have to get a degree and a good letter on a piece of paper. I didn't believe this was true. So I started to challenge this idea. I started building a business while I was doing my GCSEs. And eventually, it got to the stage where the business grew and grew. And then during my summer holidays, I had an idea for another business. It was called TechSource. And the idea was to leverage a media brand I was working on building at the time and converting it into an online news website using social media as a medium. It was an expansion from the TechSource YouTube channel. Um, and can, if, if you look at what convention says, if you want to get millions of people to get to your website, you need to hand out leaflets, get ads in newspapers possibly. But I knew that model was fundamentally broken. And I knew there was another way. So I began to reverse engineer my target audience and think about and focus on when, where users are spending their actual time. And the answer was loud and clear. It was social media. So I then began to work with my first client, who actually happened to be a small online influencer at the time. And I began working on the back end, tagging the videos, making sure it reaches thousands of people. And eventually, it got to a stage where it reached millions of people. And TechSource became one of the fastest growing tech channels on YouTube. It began growing and growing. And the tech community on YouTube is a market that's really oversaturated. And if you want to build a successful channel, you have to stand out. So the question is, how do you stand out? So at the time, um, this was after, by the way. At the time, I realized that a lot of other channels out there 
were looking at um, uh, got huge sums of money from companies to f for their opinion on a certain product. And the opinion change if the company pays them a lot. I decided that I was going to be different and recommend that tech source would be different. So I decided to, um, we, we embodied the principle basically that we were going to be honest about a product regardless of how much a company pays us to talk about that. And people could see through this. And eventually Texos grew and grew and became one of the fastest growing channels. Um, and at this stage, I started uh, at a challenge because over the years, I'd worked behind the scenes getting a channel that had literally reached millions of people. But I needed to convert that into websites, uh, into, um, from views into uh, visitors to the website. So I took on the task of creating TechSource International, a media brand that would cover technology news. And people understood that TechSource was the same brand. I was just expanding it into an online news website for our followers that wanted a more in-depth coverage of a product or news. Eventually, the website which I'm now managing with the team reaches over 220,000 people a month and is growing really rapidly. This is the website, by the way. Um, then I had a challenge. We had Google's UK division ask us if we could market the new Google Pixel 2, which was, at the time, the new, uh, the, the new smartphone at the time. And obviously, I said yes. And I then spoke to my team, and I asked them how we can get Google's new product as much coverage in the shortest amount of time, which is a difficult thing to do. But I knew it was possible, and I knew we could exceed the expectations. So from there, I put together a team of writers that would cover every aspect of the Google Pixel 2 in separate articles while keeping it very short and informative. This really engaged the audience, and we also, had, um, we also planned on having uh, YouTube videos on the channel to support this. This approach led us to reach over 225,000 targeted people through our campaign, and as a result, had a huge impact on their sales and Google were very pleased with us. Eventually, this unconventional approach led me to merge my first business with Tim Campbell, who won the first series of The Apprentice, and is someone I admired for a long time. And when I look back at what defined me in this whole business journey I've been on, it's become increasingly clear that I was brave enough to overlook the conventions and focus on the solutions to problems that would undoubtedly lead to a successful outcome. And I believe that this way of thinking will lead to, be to build better solutions for your own life and for the whole world. Thank you.